Welcome, and thank you for joining us in this Black Student Union special presentation. If you Google the definition of Pan-Africanism, you'll see that it's defined as the principle or advocacy of the political union of all the indigenous inhabitants of Africa. However, it is much more than just this simple one-sentence definition that seems somewhat confusing. Pan-Africanism's origins are found in the struggles of the African people against enslavement and colonization and may be traced back to the first resistance on slave ships, rebellions, through the constant plantation and colonial uprisings and the Back to Africa movements of the 1800s. Even though the idea of Pan-Africanism was immersed in such slave rebellions as Gabriel Proser's that held the idea that the poor white people as well as the most redoubtable Republicans joined his cause to create a more democratic republic in Virginia, the 20th century is where Pan-Africanism began to take form as a political movement. Initially formed and led by people from the diaspora, people of African heritage living outside of the continent Africa, in 1900, the Trinadian Henry Sylvester Williams called a conference in Westminster Hall of London to protest the stealing of lands in the colonies, racial discrimination, and deal with other issues of interest to blacks. There, a letter was drafted to the Queen of England and other European rulers appealing to them to fight racism and grant independence to their colonies. W.E.B. Du Bois, an African-American writer, convened the first Pan-African Congress in 1919 in Paris, France. Again, independence for African nations was demanded and similar meetings were held throughout the century. Each reiterated the demands for rights and freedom and built support for the cause of liberation and self-dependency for Africa and all people originally from the continent throughout the world. However, perhaps the most significant was the fifth Congress held in Manchester in 1945. For the first time, a large number of Africans from the continent were present and the meeting provided momentum for the numerous post-war independence movements. Pan-Africanism has been influenced by the thoughts of the masses of the African diaspora everywhere and has taken a stance of militant action and fighting white domination, but through everything that has unfolded in the world, independence, self-reliance, and unity in the struggle for liberation of not just blacks, but oppressed people of all backgrounds have remained and are still at the core of Pan-Africanism. For Spirit Week, we celebrate the Pan-African flag in the colors of red, black, and green and their symbolic meanings. Pan-Africanist and civil rights leader Marcus Garvey stressed the need for a black liberation flag and said that it was necessary as a symbol of political maturity and that the black race having a flag represented the political awareness of this community. This nationalist movement and thinking by Garvey was not unique and was in fact modeled after other nationalist movements for the Jewish and Irish. In the 1920, the red, black, and green Pan-Africanist flag that we know today was adopted to highlight the pride of a race that finally had a flag. The red of the flag was chosen because it is the color of aggression, momentum, and most importantly, blood. In the flag, it represents the blood of our martyrs, the millions of men and women who have shed their blood and given their lives for the cause of liberty, unification, and redemption from ancient times to today, and compels us to remember the sacrifice of all the unsung heroes. It represents passion, aggression, the life forces that must be tapped to release the collective energy that we will need to achieve our divine purpose on this planet and the sacrifice required and needed to achieve unity in the world. Thank you for tuning into this special. We hope it has been educational and beneficial to you. We hope you continue to join us in celebrating Spirit Week with the Black Student Union.